Manani Dumelang, hello and Abusheni. My name is Mpumelela Tamini and welcome to Sports Wrap on UJTV, where we keep you up to date with everything trending in the streets of sport. Marala Dzumagore, I'm never alone. My partners in crime are on my left hand side. Mr. David Parak, sir, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. Good uh, day to you guys, to the viewers as well. Thank you for joining us. Hey, looking fresh. <laughs> fresh cuts, eh? <laughs> and on my closer left, we have the Sheriff of UJ, of the University of Johannesburg. How are you? I'm great, and yourself, Leila? I'm great, thank you. You know what I miss? When I go 0 1 2, when the English goes. <laughs> Guys, I want to know interesting two weeks that we've gone past. What is your highlight of the past weeks? Cody? Oh, <laughs> you're going to put me under pressure. That's good. But anyway, um, my highlight of the week has to be the cricket. Mm. You know, looking at where they've come from, um, talking about the USA, which is something we spoke about off air. You know, they, they had a difficult time at USA, and now again they've, they've shown and, and proven to the whole of Gauteng why UJ Cricket is probably the best club in, in, in Gauteng. So my highlight <laughs> of the week goes to them, uh, winning the Enza 50 Premier, Premier League A. Um, so yeah, that's that's my highlight of the week. David? Yeah, look, I think uh, there's still a lot happening, you know, mm. uh, but I'll dip my fingers into netball and football, you know. I think uh, netball, uh, the Telcom Netball League obviously is returning and we will definitely be seeing great talent, you know, uh, coming from across the provinces competing in Divisions 1 and 2. Yeah. So I think, um, remember, uh, uh, the, the teams also feature both uh, athletes from universities as well as uh, national team players, you know, mm -hmm. inspired proteas, and they have more various experienced coaches. So it's a very competitive uh, um, um, league where obviously, I mean, you know, looking forward to seeing new talent as well, you know, but above all for me, I think uh, the likes of uh, the Green Purple Bell who uh, in 2023 uh, promoted into, divi into Division 1 after mm. winning Division 2, you know. Um, they really did well by cruising through their division and also beating the uh, KZ and Kingdom Stars uh, in the final, you know, uh, by 55 to 37. So I think, uh, you know, um, it, it, it's, it's going to be an interesting season again to see that build up, you know. Yeah. I think, uh, secondly, uh, today I'm... I'm <laughs> <laughs> The today, analyst. The, to, today, I'm, I'm that secondly, I you know it will be football. You know, mm. uh, we saw in the week, you know, the 18 year old Mfundo Villagazi, uh, you know, signed a pro contract extension with mm. Amakosi for life, you know, and he has been promoted in the, in, into the senior squad. So, technically, he's playing the first team now, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think he arrived at Chiefs, you know, in 2021. Um, as a youth development academy player and has been the talk of town since then. So I think um, it's time for him to shine now because if you remember early in January, uh, he also played uh, in the Carling uh, Black Label All-Stars team in January yeah. where he scored the fourth minute uh, free kick, you know, um, against the Stellenbosch FC. So Shimanji, if you understand, it's, it's not a fluke. Mm. He's good enough. Yeah. He's good enough. And I think if this is his time, he deserves to be there. So I think uh, he needs just to stay there and hopefully he can be obviously develop further with the big boys. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like a lot. It sounds like a lot. <laughs> also, he's, he's going into a, a system that's that's uh, shaky, hey? and, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how he's going to actually help the team get better. I'm Where's sure he team? will. As I'm a, sure he will. But let's see. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> and my highlight of the week has to go to the Spa Proteas 2024 squad by the likes of Boitimelo Mashoko, yeah. Tale Mate, as well as Owe Tungubani. Mm. Most definitely. I mean, Coming all the way from UJ. Yeah, Lando, it's beautiful Massive. stuff. Beautiful Massive. to see. Yo. Beautiful to see. But let's have a look at this week's results. Well, David, looking at the ABC Multiple League right now, we lost 1-0 to Jomo Cosmos. Yeah. This comes after a one-all draw against Mike One Stars. Yeah. And we're currently still number 10 on the log. 
Yes. What does this mean? One yeah, more look, game? Um, I, I, did, I was not shocked by the results against mm. Cosmos, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but who would have thought, you know, uh, 33 games later and the league is ending. Mm -hmm. um, it feels like just yesterday, you know, uh, when I said at the beginning, we've got 32 games to go. Yeah. yeah. Now they are all past, we've got one more game to go. Look, the UJ uh, senior men's football team started the league really bad. Mm -hmm. We all know that, yeah. you know, uh, we lost a goalkeeper coach yeah, and a strength and condition coach also during the season. Mm. Um, but the story is Twitter today because currently we're sitting, you know, in 10th position with one more game to go play tomorrow so i think uh, game number 34 the last one it will definitely you know be a game of an agenda because um we lost to highlands park in the first leg mm -hmm. as well as uh, in the netbank cup regional play also on the 4th of november last year so the boys <laughs> have, got a, have got a point to prove but also what, what makes it more interesting you know as much as it's about the three the three points the gap between the uj team at number 10 and the dube continental fc at number 11 it's just two points. So we've got 43, they've got 41, mm. you know, and they're playing Vets. So to finish in, to in, in top 10, we still need to win the game and also hope that, you know, uh, they either draw or Vets beat them mm -hmm. so that we finish in the top 10. You know, it's class finishing in top 10. You don't want to finish in 11th position. <laughs> but I think the boys are more than ever motivated now to do yeah. better, you know, to finish on a high note, and then we can go rest and come back again next season. And... and Cody, I've never seen you at any of these games. I'm mm. worried. <laughs> no, but, but that's why I've got a friend in David who keeps me up to date on the socials. Oh, <laughs> you know sorry. I mean? <laughs> and I appreciate it. I mean, he, he, he touched on the base, basis of how we were struggling at the beginning of the season. Yeah. And for, for someone who's not necessarily a massive soccer fanatic, mm. we sort of cancelled soccer out. Yeah. I mean, we were hurt from the varsity, uh, varsity football that yeah. we lost. And now going into the season, they went in and they lost pretty much most of the games. Yeah. And for them to now be 10th on the log, it's, it's, it's quite impressive with all that they've been dealing with, losing coaches. Yeah. And we know we, we produce players for the big teams. Yeah. And I'm sure we've lost a couple of players <laughs> as well. So for them to end up 10th um, with the start that they had, I've, I'm absolutely chuffed with the boys. I'm happy. And David, I want to know what's next from here after ABC? Yeah, well, technically, after ABC, the boys will be done until USA in December. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, knowing Coach Karawa and the UJ football uh, structures or management, they will find something to keep them busy, you know. So they'll probably get maybe a month uh, of, of a break, you know, yeah. let them focus on studies, exams are approaching, mm -hmm. and then find something to keep them busy. Either it be friendly matches or tournaments. So we'll see, um, um, and, and we'll take it from there. And the ladies at the, uh, the Hollywood Bed Super League winning 2-0 against the Durban ladies after a 2-1 loss yeah. to that other team, <laughs> <laughs> UWC. Um, David, you did predict at the beginning that it will be a tight one yeah. comparing um, or looking back at yeah. the varsity football. Yeah final that was so close as well yeah i, I did call it i called the two one uh one nil or a draw yeah. <laughs> so one of them came out to look uh watching the game mm -hmm. that second goal for ewc definitely was uh was not meant to be mm. uh because they played the ball you know into the box but the, the gap between our defender and the, and the uwc attacker was fair enough that that foul shouldn't have been called yeah. but it happened and they scored from a free kick and that's and that's how they won the game but i think you know the coming game you know they usually just are playing forte you know uh, um it's a new team uh, in the national uh, league after being promoted from Sasol last year mm -hmm. so i think uh, i mean forte has played seven uh one two you know drew one and uh, lost four you know and they sit on 12th position for now for me they are doing even better than the likes of you know Devon ladies you know yeah. thunder best ladies mm -hmm. which uh, they found in this league, you know. Um, but I think, you know, I did a bit of research and when uh, Mpumi Magnisi from SABC Sport uh, spoke to Coach Mudiko, she said in a quote, I aim uh, to better myself and that will rub off my players. Mm -hmm. We are aiming to finish in a top eight and that will be better than the ninth position in 2023. Yeah. So I think for me, you know, I love the fact that the UGA women's coaching staff are obviously focusing on small building blocks mm -hmm. for improvement, you know, and before mm -hmm. they know it, yeah. even uh, in the second half of the season, they could be a... a far more way than uh, they plan to be. But I think, you know, so far, like we always say, the, the league is going really well, you know, yeah. um, so we've won more than we've lost and we've got <laughs> two points on, on the log. Sitting in third, in, in third position mm -hmm. on the log is good so far, so we can't take anything away from them. We just keep, we should keep on building. Yeah. And, and, and Cody, just to touch on, last year we finished ninth. Mm -hmm. Currently, in eight games, we're sitting at third. Yeah. So I think the difference between the two teams, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and 
I'm not going after the gents. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the, 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 the ladies, yeah. with every tournament they've gone into, they've actually gone into complete for the, for compete for the title. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, two finals um, with the varsity football again, and yeah. now, um, like David said, they've won more than they've lost. Yeah. I think it's expected of them. You know, we've set that standard at mm -hmm. UJ Soccer. Um, with that uh, educated left foot of a coach, <laughs> yeah, he's of amazing. Eh? Of course, you know, and you know, I've I've been in one or two of their sessions, and it's yeah. it's brilliant how you know she operates with these ladies. Yeah. And again, remember, we are playing with scholars, not just a uh, university yeah. students. Yeah. So f the the development in, in in which she instills in the ladies, it's it's brilliant. And for us to compete for the league, for for cups, it's it's actually you amazing. know outstanding. It's it's amazing. Yeah. I and talking about, because we are launching, right, we are leaving South Africa. We're going all the way to that Eiffel Tower. Yeah. You know, we're leaving South Africa. We're going all the way, we're following that Eiffel Tower. We're yeah. going to Paris for the Olympics 2024. This is the second student that qualified. We're talking about Live Pelé. My man, you were talking about him at the awards. Yeah. And you were like, I don't know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> well, I mean, now I don't have to pronounce his name. I can just say the Olympian. Class, no effect. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, um, we've we've seen him. He was one of our best athletes here yeah. at UJ. So um, when when I actually heard the news, I wasn't shocked. Mm. I wasn't, you know, I was like, oh yeah, standard procedure. That's you know, having the conversation with him at the awards as yeah. well. Very humble, very calm. Um, so I'm 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 happy for him. I'm I'm proud proud of him, mm -hmm. and all the best. Uh, hopefully he goes there. Not only does he find love there, but he finds a couple of medals. <laughs> <laughs> and David, a 44.31 for 400 meter. Yeah. Remember, we were talking about running and how long it would take. Hey, hey. <laughs> no, these guys keep on clutching us serious times, you know, every week. But look, that's if he, hasn't, he doesn't have love yet in South Africa. Yo, yo, yo. Get us in trouble. Eh? Um, in the previous weekend, we obviously had, you know, the Athletic South Africa uh, senior champs uh, mm. in Peter Marie's you know, a very heated stage of display, you know, uh, I was able to watch a few events. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the likes of UJ's, you know, Shirley and Kubu, the 23-year-old, you know, uh, picking a double, a double gold medal in the women's 200 and uh, 400 meters is pure class. Mm. You understand? Um, and I think the, the likes of, uh, you know, Rorisa and Chovial and Shelly uh, and their partner in the 4x4 four, uh, four four relay for the women, they also, you know, got silver. It was another good show. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a common factor for UJ athletes, you know, uh, to, to, to get podium finishes, you know, in, in most of their competitions. So I'm laying this foundation just obviously to build up to, to, to you know, to life PLA. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, he, he sealed it with a great run, you know, clocking for the 4 3 one, like you say, you know, in the men's 400. Nothing new to him, like you said, Cody, you know. <laughs> he, 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 he's, a, he, he's a second time Olympian, he's been there before. Yeah. I think uh, the previous one, he was probably one of the youngest yeah. Olympians, mm. you know. And also, he came back and uh, was uh, a nominee for Sportsman of the Year Awards, you know, for, for UJ. So I think the difference for him this time around is he's got experience. Yeah. He's done this before. And he will definitely have a better approach, you know. Mm. I, I, I was listening to his interview. He said even for the ASA champs, when they prepared, um, he didn't know uh, uh, the target that the coaches ha had put for him. Mm. And unknowingly, he still beat it. So I think uh, he's in the right space, you know, uh, in, in terms of competition. So he just needs to focus on Paris 2024 now and go out there and hopefully bring back another uh, podium finish in terms of you not know, getting a medal. So I'm sure he will prepare adequately. And in terms of gold medals... We're sitting at five gold, eight silver yes. from the ASA. Yeah. yeah. And right now, it makes me wonder, what does our future look like in terms of athletics? I mean, it's results, results, results. <laughs> I mean, David will probably go deeper into it yeah. with details. He, may, he puts me under so much pressure. Uh. <laughs> but the one thing that I, you know, I've noticed from, from the Central Gauteng uh, team that mm -hmm. went down to Peter Marisburg is it's predominantly UJ students yeah. and it's you know it just it just tells me that we're doing something great here at UJ with uh, coach I call him Hulk Hogan uh, yeah. Roger <laughs> you know, they, they're doing a fantastic job with our athletes our athletes are not only competing at university level yeah. but at provincial level and now it's not only that I mean you've seen now we've got national athletes yeah. so I, I'm, I'm actually it's, it's looking good. We are attracting the younger generation to yeah. come in, of athletes to come into the university. Yeah. And with that being said, they know they are in good hands. They yeah. will be well taken care of and they'll definitely get better. So I think UJ Athletics, definitely moving forward and to, to greater strides. Surely, surely.
And that's about it for us for now. Well, let's have a look at your upcoming fixtures. about today's episode we're talking everything results yeah. but not forgetting that rowing participated in the usa 2024 sprints where they overall finished third but mm. meaning the ladies finished third in their category yeah. one gold five silvers and three bronze mm. then we move right along to the men finishing sixth in the overall category yeah, yeah. with one silver it's expected eh i mean they, they train everywhere they go, every chance they get to train. <laughs> I mean, we were at the, 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 the show we had, the collab between the French Embassy mm -hmm. and the UJ, UJ Sports. Yeah. Guess what they were doing? Training. They were training. <laughs> which is quite impressive. We were playing against Vitz. At Boston Cup. Boston Cup. What were they doing? They were training. They were training. <laughs> so it's like, all of this is expected yeah. of, you know, yeah. of them. I'm a little bit disappointing <clears throat> with the gents' uh, sixth place, uh, sixth place uh, position mm -hmm. and finish. Uh, would have expected a little bit better, but of course, everyone else is, is preparing in their own way. Yeah. Um, but it's rather unfortunate that they finished where they finished mm -hmm. because, you know us, UJ, we expect nothing but podium places. Yeah. So well done to the ladies and the gents. I think now they must just also come to all the rugby training <laughs> and train as well so that they can get that podium place. But um, absolutely chuffed with them. And David, I don't know if you run away from water or you you are part of it. I too swim. Yeah, look, um, um, not necessarily not necessarily that I'm running away, you know, but I think uh, a bronze finish, you know, for overall yeah. is a good reflection for me. You understand? Um, I think looking at both the rowing squads, I'm seeing a lot of new faces, you know. Mm, so yeah. in my view, it's the, it's, uh, it's it's the young teams, you know, yeah. uh, new players still getting used to the systems at this level of competition. But I think you know, uh, it, it, this was like uh, a starter and hopefully they can use this momentum going into the SA Champs, you know, uh, where they'll be competing again this weekend. So uh, hopefully they can come back, you know, obviously with uh, improved performance and keep uh, uh, clocking those medals. Uh, definitely our cabinet at DJ, they've got more space. <laughs> <laughs> we too sweet. Of course I can. What are you talking for? <laughs> <laughs> but gentlemen, as we move right along, I want to know your crush of the week. Well, don't think too much. Well, oh. definitely not thinking too much, you know. <laughs> um, a, a week cannot go by without me speaking about rugby, okay? okay. <laughs> so let let me dip my, my fingers into into rugby for now. Yeah. Uh, FM University Cup is done, mm -hmm. and uh, my crush will be in Togoza Makaza, you know, uh, the wing full back from the University of Cape Town, you understand? Mm -hmm. The 22 year old broke the then standing record of the all time point scorer, Ooh. which was 230 points by Tinas the BA who played for FMB UP Tux between 2016 and 2019. Mm. Makaza came and he said, okay, we see you, sir. <laughs> and he clashed, you know, a total of two, six, seven points by the end of the 2024 season. Mm -hmm. And he is the new standing record holder of this category. And I think uh, he, he's been at UCT for, for, for two seasons, mm -hmm. you know, and he's accumulated, accumulated all these points o over that time. Yeah. What made it easy for him is uh, he is the kicker for the team, even yeah. though he's a wing. Oof. Something very rare to see for a wing to kick. Mm. Usually you kick with your fly half, your full bag, or your center if you know push comes to shove yeah. but you see kicking with the with the wing something new but he is definitely uh, getting those percentages uh, uh, right all the time whenever he kicks you you are assured he's going to go through um in the game he misses at least one kick out of five or ten so well deserved and i think he is definitely deserving of greater height and hopefully yeah. there is a province that is definitely discussing his uh, future I, um, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into, back into the netball. Yeah. Um, I think for me, my crush of the week goes to Tale Mate. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, also because I've, I know a bit about her story. She, yeah. she went through a massive injury. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for her to come back into the game and be included in, into the Spa Proteas squad, <laughs> Definitely, yeah. um, I think that's incredible. <clears throat> um, and it's an inspiration to a lot of athletes who, 
who might be going through the same thing that it's 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 not done. Yeah. yeah. You know, he well. missed out she missed out rather on the Boston netball. And yeah. she she was quite upset, you know, and for her to miss out on that and then now come back and don the, the, the green and gold. Um, I'm proud of her. Tale. <laughs> <laughs> well, my crush of the week has to go to Lekona Finger. We've yeah. been discussing this oh. from the beginning. Varsity Cup is over and we are still back discussing it. Well, he won the Rookie of the Year 2020-24. Mm. Yeah. And thinking about it, first time in the Varsity Cup setup. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. Winning Rookie of the Year. Not starting at Young Camps, no. Straight to the first. Straight, Straight to the first. What so, well, it is what, what it is. man. Yeah, look, I think he, he's, he's very good enough, you know. Um, um, he's an alumni of uh, Westville, our uh, boys, you know, uh, high school. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously he came uh, to Chobeck, you know, he's, he's part of the, the Lions uh, junior structures. Mm -hmm. So I think we definitely will see him in the under-21 career cup, you know, uh, with the junior boys. But I think coming to, to the to university, like you say, and shooting straight into varsity cup is keeping the young guys' uh, division. Is, a, is, is something big. He has played six out of the seven games for UJ, you know, and he, he's been immense every week, uh, putting in great performance. I think he, it's well deserving for him. And uh, for me, watching the, the reception uh, on social media of how people approach the whole voting system for him, mm -hmm. it was great. I'm thinking, yeah, yo. <laughs> no, this guy has got, he, he's got a, a community that is really backing him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So getting that award, it's definitely something that is huge and we can look forward to seeing what he's going to do in the 2025 uh, season, you know, uh, provided he passes and that the relationship <laughs> between the two uh, institutions still exists. Yeah. I mean, come on, you need to get minimum 60 credits to play. Nothing is for free. So you have to earn it as much as you are good. So Finka, my boy, we love you, but the basics must be done. <laughs> <laughs> the basics must be done. Let, let's leave it right there before we start stressing our West. <laughs> but thank you very much for tuning in to today's episode. Please make sure to follow us on all our social media platforms. We are UJ underscore sport as well as UJ TV 23. And from the team and myself, Rere, bye-bye. Until next time. The University of Johannesburg, the future reimagined.